So my name is Alex Aslin. Uh, I'm a graduate from the Dalmore School of Business. I did my undergraduate degree in finance there uh, for four years. I was also uh, on the track and field team um, for, for, the, for the four years of my undergrad. Uh, and then I did my MIB, uh, so Master of International Business, for one year at USC. Um, and followed, I followed that up with a double degree at Bocconi University in Italy um, for, for one last year of school. Uh, also in international uh, management. Um, after that, I joined Roland Berger, a consulting firm, a um, German firm headquartered in Munich. Uh, I've been working in their Brussels office for the last three years, focusing on uh, strategy and sustainability um, for Belgian and uh, international clients. Great question. So. I think the the reasons for why I pursued uh, or I, I wanted to pursue um, the the IB degree um, and doing a master's uh, I think is a second part of that. Um, so the IB aspect uh, I wanted to gain exposure to different cultures. I wanted to uh, expand my understanding of um, how the business world works, um, especially on a, a let's say global level. Uh, I had studied my undergraduate degree at USC because I, uh, I was on the track and field team there uh, for four years. Um, but I'm European and I've always wanted to get this additional, let's say, level of education than just uh, the bachelor. Uh, I had always wanted to get a master, so that was kind of my uh, a, a really good way to continue studying at USC and also getting this uh, additional uh, degree, which is what much more recognized, I would say, in Europe than it than it it was at the time in the U.S. a couple of years ago. I think it's gaining exposure, and um, and and people are starting to to notice those kind of degrees. But in in Europe, it's really well known and and makes a difference when you're looking for a job. Um, so the reason I, I first went to USC was really for sports, for track and field. Um, I was in the French national team, and I got a scholarship to go study there. So I. I kind of uh, jumped ship. I was studying finance in France uh, in my hometown of Lille. Um, and I, when I got the scholarship, I didn't think twice. I, I went there, um, started over, but in my four years of finance uh, over there. Um, the, the first reason why I went is, was really to gain um, kind of an exposure to a new culture, right? Um, the living in the US, uh, living on a campus in the US, those kind of things you see in the movies. And it's really like, oh, it's, it's really cool. Um, so that was that was kind of the first reason, and then um, I wanted to study business because it felt like it would open the most doors to me after school, um, and, and so that's kind of the the second reason why, uh, or the main reason why I picked uh, finance in the first place, and why I continued finance while I was um, uh, when I when I went to the U.S. Um, when I transitioned to my masters, um, I had with. With the MIB, you have the ability to study both in the US and in Europe because you have two years of master's and you can get two degrees from two renowned uh, institutions. Uh, so that was extremely appealing to me. Um, and and uh, being able to have this degree from a, a European school um, as well made it, let's say, that it was really the best of both worlds. I could stay in the US for one more year and then get back to Europe and have uh, the degree that I kind of wanted to wrap up my uh, education. So that was really um, uh, extremely, let's say, uh, interesting. Uh, and, and what made it kind of like the icing on the cake was uh, the cost. Um, it was extremely affordable compared to other uh, one year masters in the US or even some one or two years program in, in Europe. So um, financially, it was also interesting to, to do the to follow this path, let's say. It's a good question. Um, I think you need to create kind of the opportunities for yourself. Um, so to be successful while you're studying, you have to really reach out to alumni, you have to um, go to the career fairs, um, be involved in all the extracurricular kind of activities that the program offers. Um, and no matter where you're trying to go, um, after school, there will be competition in that field. So you really have to create those opportunities for yourself and show that you're, um, no, let's say less good than anybody that would come from a, um, a more prestigious university in the US. Um, I think that's kind of the lesson that I took with me in my second year of master's while I was at Bocconi. Um, 
and I think we can touch upon that a bit later when you're uh, in the interview. But um, the yeah, the, the the really the aspect of pushing for yourself and trying to get um, as much as you can from the program and and to transition then into into the post uh, school life. So, so the the I had a teacher or professor from Bulgaria. Her name was uh, Tatiana Kostova. I think she's still there now. Um, she was extremely um, so we all of her class was case studies, and I really like this way of teaching, uh, which is why it kind of stayed and uh, and I think about that class uh, a lot. Um, but yeah, it was really concrete. Um, you you would discuss in the class what companies do well, what they don't do well, the problems that they're facing. And it's similar to what I'm doing now as a consultant today, um, kind of reflecting on the business problems that they're facing and, and finding solutions. Um, so in that regard, it, it reminds me of what we did in her class. Um, and the, the way it, she also kind of stays in my mind because she, I mean, she was a great professor, uh, really fun and, and um, uh, yeah, just, her class was very enjoyable, I would say. There's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think uh, in, in three words um, to, to be a good consultant, uh, the collaborative, uh, I think is, is really key. You work a lot on, um, and hands-on, I think that goes, um, goes with it. Um, you work a lot on, um, let's say, team, team projects uh, that are very concrete, um, so, for example, I, I did a, uh, we, well, we did a, a project for a small uh, business uh, in South Carolina for uh, a semester where we were helping the company to expand to um, new countries. Um, so we provided them kind of a, with a, a business plan on how to, to go and enter new new markets. Um, so that was working together. That was extremely concrete because at the end the company had our recommendation list and they. Well, whether they decide to do to follow the list or not, but at least it's it's quite kind of a, a concrete a business example. Um, so that's the, the first two, and then the third one I would say uh, is international, uh, especially in the MIB. Uh, it's a small cohort. I'm at during my time it was I think 50 or 55 students, maybe maybe a bit more now. Um, but we had close to half of the students that were from uh, European schools coming to study for one semester or for the double degree, but Say doing it in reverse, so starting in Europe and then finishing in in, uh, in the US. Um, so very very international. We also had some uh, students from uh, from Asia, a few Chinese colleagues, um, Taiwan as well. So very diverse kind of set of students, and it really helps you to expand a bit how the world works and the, see the different perspectives. You know, when you're in a class where you're seeing um, studying the interconnectivity of business, politics, uh, governments, and then you're talking to, uh, so first of all, surrounded by by uh, students from everywhere. You're in the US, you have a professor who is from Bulgaria, for example, and then you have your, your uh, student next to you is from China. You really get this kind of very um, varied, let's say, um, perspective on, on, the, on, on a specific topic. Uh, so that's very rich, let's say, experience. It, it was really, uh, I, I said it before, but a bit like in the movies, you know, um, you go to a, a campus, uh, it's a college town, so um, it's it's like, it's not like New York or Philadelphia or even LA where you're, it's a gigantic town and nobody else, nobody I would say that's not in the school really cares about the school. Uh, here, everybody cares about the school. It's the state university, so you have the entire state that is kind of, um, rooting for the for the the school um and and you have you, you really sense it um so I, I was an athlete while i was there my first four years and we we felt it when we traveled across uh the state but also across the southeast of the us um you really felt that uh let's say the the, the fans that would be supporting the teams um we during the fall you have the football games and so you basically have the entire town that shuts off and or shuts down and, and people come to watch the the, the, the football games. Um, it's kind of a one in a lifetime experience, I would say. Um, uh, and then in the spring, you have then the basketball team uh, that's taking over with baseball and other sports. So it's really the, the whole town lives around uh, the sports 
of the, the, the sporting teams of the, the university. Um, uh, it makes also the, the, the town feel very young and dynamic because you have those students uh, everywhere in the center of the city. It's, it's really like in downtown, you go from basically the business school, you cross the street and you're at the capital of the, of the state. So it's really in the middle of downtown. Um, so yeah, very cool atmosphere um, for, from all those those events that are happening. Not only I talked about the sports because I was an athlete, but there are many other events. Uh, there were like concerts and, and festivals and uh, yeah, a lot of things happening in this in this small town that yet feels uh, very dynamic and like a lot of things are happening. Uh, and it's also very well connected, let's say, to other big cities. It's only three hours from Atlanta, an hour from Charlotte, so you have those big airports that allow you to fly in and out. Um, if you're coming from abroad, that's quite convenient. Um, and, and even the local airport is well connected to other US big cities like Chicago, New York, or, or other towns, so. I'm, I'm French, so having a de degree from a top European school was always kind of on my radar. Uh, it was kind of a deal I had made with my dad before I went to the US in the first place. Uh, to, to guarantee him that I wasn't just uh, going there and never coming back. Um, so, so that was something I, I wanted to work on later on after my undergraduate degree. Uh, I asked myself whether I would want to come back to, to Europe uh, altogether or finish finish it off, let's say, with one more year in the US. Um, the, the USC experience, like I said, was very hands-on. Uh, if I compare to Bocconi, that was a lot more theoretical. Uh, I really enjoyed my time in Italy, let's say, in, in living in Milan. Um, but the learning and the teachings that I got from Bocconi were less concrete, I would say, than, uh, than USC. Um, uh, I think it was two very different atmospheres, uh, collaborative on one hand, like I said, for USC. And on the other hand, uh, you had a very competitive <laughs> um, bunch of students at, at Bocconi that are really trying to push for the best like on a constant basis. Um, it's even to the point where if students get the top grade, but they don't have the, let's say, honors or distinction, uh, then they feel like they failed. Um, I had never seen that before. So it's it's really unique, I would say. Um, but all in all, I think Bocconi is also a really good school. It's, it's a different type of teachings and, and learning environment, um, also very international. Um, and you see really when you're in, let's say in the US and you have this perspective about um, it's you take this really global perspective and focusing on, on the US, but also in, in, in Africa, on, on South America, on Asia. Um, and then when you go to Bocconi and, and it's really it's much more focused on Europe. Uh, you all the cases that you study are based on European companies. It's really based on uh, you talk about the European debt crisis, you talk about um, you have a focus on Italy as well, which you don't have in the other school uh, or in the first year of the program. So that it's good to have this kind of balance, I would say, um, this, this concrete learning versus theoretical, the collaborative versus the competitive. Uh, you get a bit of the best of both worlds, I would say. After I, I finished um, Bocconi, um, I, I had wanted to work in consulting. Um, the the, let's say appearance, the, the the attraction towards consulting came from being able to work on a lot of different topics um, without really being a specialist in something, at least for the first few years. Um, and so that was kind of a continuation of my of my learning journey, I would say. Um, also, the 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 feedback I got from people that had entered the industry was that you keep learning skills and developing yourself as a professional. Um, in the first few years, and it's a great, let's say, um, first job to, to really, when you enter the workforce. Um, so I, I, while I was there at Bocconi, I applied to a bunch of different jobs uh, in Europe um, in consulting firms, and I got interviews uh, in different, different companies, and then um, ultimately the best one, or the best fit as well, in terms of uh, company culture was with Roland Berger. Uh, so it's a German consulting firm um, uh, headquartered in Munich uh, and I'm working in their Brussels office. So I've been working there for the last three years um, and it so far matches everything that I wanted out of consulting. So it's 
it's been really a, a cool journey um, to keep developing and, and learning new skills, uh, but also seeing different topics and, and being able to work on very cool um, business problems, I would say, for, for companies. So sustainability was on my mind while I was in school, I think, but not to the level that it is today. So I think I had it kind of in the back of my mind. Uh, I liked the environment. I liked being outside and, you know, uh, like I recycled uh, my, my, my waste and those kind of things. Uh, I, I paid attention to what I bought at the store, but at the same time, it was very, let's say, on a high level. Um, and, and once I started working and I started to understand really the implications of every action that we take. And, and I think it's also a bit being more, a bit more mature, um, helped me to get to the level that I am today and um, seeing the different projects and the implications of the actions companies take to, on, on the environment. That's what really shifted me towards this sustainability focus um, and um, what I did in school helped me to get to this point to kind of reflect and, and not take everything for granted and, and have this critical mind but at the same time um, the, the last let's say push was done because of work and not because of the, the school I would say. Uh, so it was a good training ground uh, but the, the how I'm like the, the way I'm focused on sustainability now is really because of the projects I've done and, and what I've encountered in work uh, more than my learning, uh, my education journey, I would say. One course made me want to get into it, didn't help me to get it, but really made me want to get into it. It was this course where we had this, let's say, field project uh, helping a company to enter new markets that I described earlier. Um, that was kind of the the haha moment for me where I was like, okay, this is something I like. Like, it's really cool to find new uh, new ways to think about a problem and find solutions. Um, so that that was the, yeah, when I decided to, to really enter the industry. Um, but then, as you said, to get into it is very competitive. Um, and honestly, I, I just, uh, it, it was just a matter of preparation for the interviews um, uh, and, and yeah, doing so, the, the process, I would say, is quite standardized across the board when you try to enter consulting. You do case interviews uh, where you're being described a business problem for a company. Usually it's a past project that's been done by the consultant and then you just have to think about it with the consultant. What's the best way to solve the problem for the company? Um, and, and there are great resources online uh, out there. Um, at USC, we also had the Gamecock Consulting Club. Uh, so the Gamecocks are the, the mascot of the school. but we had, um, let's say, we, we did some cases, uh, uh, let's say virtually, because at the time I was already at Bocconi, but um, then you, you with, with the people from the club, sorry, and then you also do um, interviews and, and, and prep uh, tests with people that you don't know uh, on, on websites and, and, and the resources that you can find online. Um, and I think that's the best way to do it, honestly. it's it's just spending hours and hours of preparing to get into uh, the right mindset and 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 to to let I, I don't I don't think I should say crack the, the case but it's uh, yeah probably the best way to do is is just practice. Um, I think what needs to be kept in mind is that there is no right or wrong answer in the case. Um, and now I, I mean I see it now as an interviewer also in consulting. Um, you really have to approach the problem in a structured way. Um, so show that you're structured, that you are quick on your feet to, to think, uh, that you can think analytically. Um, and if you're being challenged, basically just show that your reasoning holds. And if it doesn't, then you just have to be adaptable and, and show that you're also coachable so that you can find a new solution for your for the problem. Um, I think if you can show, demonstrate those, those uh, qualities in the interview, there shouldn't be any problem to get a job in any consulting firms. It's uh, really the the main the main aspect there. I, I think my advice for prospective students would be to apply. I think they won't regret it. Um, the 
the learnings that they will get, the teachings they will get from the professors at Dollamore um, in the in the in the MIB will be really, I think, a kind of a step up from their from whatever they can have learned from their undergrad degrees. Um, and I think it's also a good way to reflect on what you've learned, make it a bit more concrete, uh, start applying it through concrete project, um, uh, team projects, let's say school projects. Um, and you start also um, reflecting on, okay, how you go a bit deeper in the, in the reflection, in the analysis, in the, in the things that you thought you had understood um, and it helps you to put things into a better perspective. And the other thing is you, you can you get to travel and go abroad. So that's not something uh, that that is that easy, I would say, once you've started work to work, especially for Americans. Uh, Europeans, I think I think it's easier to go and, and, and work abroad, but or at least in Europe, but for Americans, uh, and I know it from first hand experience because my wife is American, um, being like Traveling and working uh, in Europe is is quite difficult. It's a bit like for us to go to the US. So it, it's a nice experience uh, to have if you wish to stay in the US. I mean, in Europe, sorry, afterwards. Um, so I would, my, my advice would be to apply. I think it's a easy process uh, and then it can only lead to fun and uh, uh, good, let's say, relationships that you will build for the, for the future.